Hey, how's everybody doing today? Okay, back with another video. Don't want to make it too, too long because it's not an unboxing or anything like that. I just wanted to kind of go over the Wing Wing Orion 2 rudder pedals. Well, they say Skywalker on it, but I don't think that's going to last because of some type of copyright rules, you know, Star Wars and all that stuff. But <clears throat> anyways, I've had these now for about two weeks. I didn't do an unboxing because there's already, geez, there's already three or four I've seen videos out there, unboxings on this, so kind of really no sense. I went from the Thrustmaster, the TPIs, which were really, really nice rudder pedals, but I got to be honest with you, I, I, I almost wasn't going to go over and try these, and I was like, you know, I'm going to give it a shot. So, obviously, I gave it a shot. These are these are outstanding. I kept having a problem with the, with the TPIs that was kind of throwing me off a little bit, especially landing any of my planes, because no matter what I did, I could I could get 100% break on one on, on my left, and I could only get 95 between 93 and 95 on the right hand side. And I did everything, so I did a little research online and on some of the other posts, whether it be like Reddit posts or anything else, there was a number of people that were having that same problem. I don't know if it's an application problem or if it's something with what's inside of the Thrustmaster as far as their component, but a lot of people had the same problem and they couldn't square it away. So when I would land, you know, you want to go full break after you get down to around 90, you know, underneath 100 miles an hour, you want to, you want to pad your brakes. My, my plane would keep jerking to the left because it was getting more brake on the left. And I'd end up in the grass or into another plane or who knows where the hell I ended up, but I ended up somewhere. Anyways, I said, you know, I'm gonna give these a shot. So I got them and it came included with, with the uh, damper, which is identical to any other damper you can buy online. I seen some people saying that it was a cheap $15 damper. No, it's not. I actually checked the numbers out on it and the name, the brand, and it, goes between 80 and like $120. So it's the regular damper you can buy aftermarket for any of the rudder pedals that use dampers, whether it's MFG, Thrustmaster. Um, I even think maybe the Verpal. I'm not sure. I've never used Verpal as far as the rudders, but I think it might have it on there. Same, same exact one. It, 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 no difference. So the damper on here basically is used just to get rid of your spring. For me, it's, it's all I really use it for. I don't, uh, I haven't tried flying helicopter yet. I imagine with that, you would go with a whole different setting, whether it would be tight or looser. But anyways, quality, incredible. Everything on it is steel, other than the plastic front right here, which lights up, or aluminum. The pedals are, uh, you can see they're large. I don't know if they're any bigger than the, than the TPIs, but plenty of pedal. And when I opened up, I had opened up the TPIs, and when I looked inside of it, I was really shocked because like 80% of that pedal, it's just a hollow space in there. Yeah, it looks good in the way it's, you know, it's a pendulum, pendulum rudder pedals. It kind of gives you more of the idea that, you know, like you would get inside of a plane, but at the end of the day, it's the same thing. You're pushing and releasing and using the brake. It does the same thing. Now, left and right, 100% break. I found that with these, it seems to have a little more of a break throw, maybe a tiny bit more than other pedals I've used, which is okay. As far as moving back and forth, that can be adjusted how far you wanna push it in left or right, or you can transfer this to like ground vehicles and helicopter, as I said before, by simply pulling this up and turning it, it locks it. Now you can use it in a different way. You can use these Allen keyed bolts here that screw in, I guess, yeah, they just push up against the inside here and it'll limit how much throw you get on your rudders, whether you're going, whether you're going left or wetter. I'm starting to talk like I'm from Boston, wetter. And that's it, you just put that like that. So it has some great features with it. The quality on it is, is outstanding. When you hook it up, I didn't have to really do anything other than go into my settings on my plane and set up the left and left and right brake. Um, the rudder already set itself up, which was really nice. I just went in, tested everything. As far as your SIMAP Pro, that application's just hands down. It, it's just very easy to use. I mean, it, you just go in and you do your configuration. Basically, you just push your foot left, push your foot right, select your brake, and it, you, it shows in the application that it's working 100%, or if it's not, then you've got a problem. But for me, it was 50 on one side, 50 on the other, and 100 on each brake, first shot, no problem. As far as curve and stuff, I did find 
that with these I had to use less curve than I did with other rudder pedals. It might be because of the amount of movement left and right that you have. It, it, it seemed I had to have it tighter. I didn't want it. So if I put it on 20, 25% curve, it, I, I really had way too much like movement. It was, it was so, I dropped it down to, I think around 10 worked great for me. So anyways, we'll get past that. Let's, I'm gonna move the camera. We're gonna take a look at some of the other features on this, some of the things that I found interesting and hopefully keep this as short as possible. Okay, so as far as adjustability with this, let me get a chair out of the way. You have some Allen screws or bolts that go in the side here, and it's got some really, I mean, everything on here is heavy duty. All the bolts are like well over like three eighths and stuff. Nothing in, on here is skimpy. You have the same on the inside as you do on the out. You have the three pre-drilled holes. Well, actually, it's not really drilled. It's, you know, they're made that way. And if you use this adjustment here, all you put, you might get a little bit less of a throw, but there's really not a lot of adjustments I could find on here. Like in the back, let's turn it around. So in the back, you can see where the piston, well, actually it's the rod goes through and connects to the back of the rudder pedal. It looks like it's probably like an eight millimeter bolt, probably like, I don't know, easily good inch, good inch and a half, inch and a quarter bolt. It screws right in there, heavy duty. Everything has nice bearings inside of it. So you've got plenty of room and plenty of flexibility. I did put a little bit of oil on it, just for shits and giggles, really. It wasn't sticking or anything. I just wanted to put it on there. So there's not a lot of adjustment here. I thought maybe like these rods were made to be able to turn, but they're not, they're stationary, which is okay. You know, that's all fine. As far as like I mounted it, I just drilled two holes over here. I lined it up, drilled two holes here and it, were, it fit in line with the notches already in it. I don't mind drilling into this plate. It doesn't matter to me. I mean, some people wouldn't want to do it with theirs. I, I get it. You pay a lot of money for these, these Bowen cockpit. And they get the feeling that you're like ruining something. But for me, it didn't matter. I mean, I can weld that hole back up, uh, put a piece of plate underneath. I mean, I wouldn't even bother. It's, I mean, not like it doesn't have holes all over it anyways. This is like eighth inch steel, so it took some drilling. I was really surprised. Now, as far as like mounting, if you don't want to use it this way and you're going to mount it, say, onto your floor or if you're just gonna set it on the floor on the rubber mat. It comes with like some of this extrusion. It's basically like 10 by 10. This isn't the one. I can't find the other ones. I don't know where I put them. They're here somewhere. I, I looked all over, so I'm not gonna sweat it. But basically that's it. what it is. A nut goes inside of here, you know, and you attach it. And then you got another one over there and you mount it however. I think over here on this side, it goes on an angle. Yeah, it does. So pretty, pretty basic layout. I didn't feel I needed it. Obviously you can see I didn't. So everything on here, it, it, it's, it's all cast, obviously. I don't even know, this is a heavy duty plastic and that's what some of your components are inside of. We're gonna lift up the camera again. One more quick look at a down shot of it. Okay, so here we are again, kind of looking down on it. I hope everybody's able to see this with no problem. I was a little worried that I would, wasn't gonna go this high, but yeah, the tripod works that way. So everything is held together by all like eight and six millimeter Allen type bolts. You do get some screws. These are nuts right here that go on here. Basically the pedals come separated, take it, you slide them in, you put a washer on, you tighten it down. Very simple. The spring was already preloaded, but obviously you can see how easily it comes off and goes back on, but you gotta kinda give it a little pull. The damper, it comes with a couple six millimeter screws. One of them's probably like almost three inches long. The other one's like, a, this would be the shorter one. So this is like a two inch. This is probably like a three and a half. It goes through a spacer. The spacer has got a notch in the bottom of it that fits right onto this little, little knob right there that sticks out down here, it just rests on there. 
basically you put the long one on the back, you put the short one on the front, you end up moving your damper, it's basically just a hydraulic damper, you end up putting it in a position where you can just set it down, put your screws through there, tighten them down and bang, you're done. As far as like I was showing these, how they adjust, I, I don't use them. I, I don't really, I guess I could probably, in, in the SIMAP program, I could probably tighten up the amount of movement it takes to go to 100, 100 on left and right, but it seems to be pretty damn good the way it is. Now, as far as this goes, when you put this, when you pull, see when it sits on this way and it locks, it has a couple little notches already built onto the top. So when you pick it up and turn it, let me show you. You can hear that. See it, so it sits right in there with no problem whatsoever. As far as when you get the pedals, these rods down here, they're already attached to the bottom part. So you can figure out pretty much by where you want to place it. You can put it to one of them three holes. I found that the center one was absolutely perfect for me because the way this works is I have it on a little bit of an angle so they're already pretty much, I would say like probably about 80, 85% up and down. I don't like them to be like laid down like in a car type thing, that's not for me. Although I tell you what, I've been watching some of them car racing um, simulators and that, man, that looks cool, but to start investing in again all over, Aye. although I get the pedals for it now. So, once you get these screwed on, once you get the pedals on, the only thing that you have to do is, like I said, the rod here is already attached to the pedal itself. All you gotta do is it comes with a couple six millimeter screws, you put them through. It already has some pre-threaded area in the bottom of this right here. You can actually see where the threads go right through. And you just tighten it right down. That's it. I mean, this is really straightforward. You put the power to it and you're off and running. Over here in the front, it has a couple, I'd say like silver dollar size, <sighs> how do you want it? Like a wheel with a groove in it or two wheels on each an upper and lower that has ball bearings in there that lets it ride. Over here you have your arms on the front and the back which reach down in here that work with your controls. The controls, uh, the stuff that, it, you, it's just a basic circuit board in there that's pre-programmed already to work and give you other pedals. Now, this does come on the side. I don't know if you can see this, but it already has some other holes. These aren't light either, especially with the thing on it. It, ha it has some other pre-drilled holes in there. You can see where the fittings are in now. I don't know if um, Wing Wing is gonna be coming out with some additions for this something else you can add on to it. I don't see what, well, I can't think about it, but pretty simple. You can also, I guess, you can move the damper into, like if you want to angle it more, you can move it. It looks like, no, actually you really can't. I guess you can move the damper over here a little bit more because there's a, a hole drilled there, but then it, yeah, it would probably fit right there. But I wanted it on a little bit of angle. It gives a little more throw to the damper. It takes a little bit more pressure off it, I would imagine. It comes with the cables all pre-attached. All you gotta do is plug it in. Plug it in, run your SIMAP Pro application, and it's going. As far as quality, like I said, outstanding. I would have to say some of the best quality that I've came across. Everything on it is top notch. I like the design. I like the look that they give. It's almost like a heavy duty tire tread look. It all has a really heavy duty powder coating on it. You can hear, put my mic right down there. Absolutely quiet, nice and smooth. It's got top quality bearings in here. One thing I noticed is when you put the big bolts right here, you don't want to over tighten them because it puts pressure on the washer in here and it does make it a little bit sticky. So it gets to a certain point and it doesn't move once you tighten it. So that was easy. As far as moving back and forth, you can see how nice and simple that is. 
Look how nice and smooth that is. Thrustmaster pedals were nice. I liked the pendulum. If they would have gave me 100 on each side, if there would have been a fix for it that I could have found, I probably would have kept them. As far as price on those things, they have the exact same components inside here, basically in the Thrustmaster. It's just a little box. You got that big tower that sticks way up with a little square box that sits in the middle where the arms ride. And I just think that it gives the illusion of an expensive item. I would say they're about $300 overpriced. Are they, I'm not saying they're bad, they're awesome. If you can get 100 on each side, like I said, a lot of people had an issue with that, but they are nice and I would have kept them. Paid a lot of money for them. For half the price, you can get these and you're getting, I would think better quality. I'm gonna go with better quality. For me, I'm happier with it. I'm not knocking Thrustmaster, but I think the quality of these, everything on it was well thought out. For their first set of rudder pedals that Wing Wings come out with, they nailed it. They absolutely nailed it. I mean, bravo, Win Wing. Now, basically everything I have is Win Wing except for my F16 throttle. I've got a Win Wing F16 throttle that I don't use no more for one reason, is I don't like a couple of the knobs on it. It's not original to the F16C. And I kind of like, I, I like the Thrustmaster handle. It just spot on, it's nice. They did a good job with that. I can't take that from them right on the money but we're not going to get into doing a review on that stuff we did a little something on that already so i'm going to wrap this up if you have any questions and you want to know anything about now win wing like always they don't give you any documentation you're on your own when you get these but if you go online to their website they have a great manual that you can download print out or just leave up on your internet and read it it's a PDF file and it shows step by step on how to put it together and what it does. End of the day, you got two, you got two screws for your damper. These slide in and you're screwing the, the rods in the back and, and you're off and running. Other than mounting it, I mean, there's no instructions on how to mount it. You just look at the holes and mount it. Pretty simple. So Win Wing, hey, I'm giving them a freaking 10 all day long with this. No complaints. Works nice. Comfortable. Does everything I like it to do. Plenty of room on the footrest pedals. They nailed it. Once again, Win Wing comes through. Some people like to call Win Wing a medium range area. Sure, if you're comparing them to real simulator, I know that if F16, their pressure sensitive stick is big money and it's very accurate from what I've seen. A lot of people say that Verpal stands above Win Wing. I've had Verpal. I've had Win Wing, I've had Thrustmaster, and I gotta say, I think Win Wing is right up there with Verpal all day long. I mean, you may not think so, if you want to write to me and tell me different, fine, but you're wasting your breath. I have tested all of it, and I think they are a top quality company, and I will go with them every time. I have their Top Gun setup. I have their 16 base. I have their 16 grip, 18 grip, 18 base, 18 throttle. I'm probably going to end up getting the F-15 throttle grip and swapping that out because I've been messing around with the F-15E a little bit, but that's a lot of work to go through when I'm pretty much always flying the F-16 most of the time. I really love that jet. So that's pretty much all I get to say on this. Love the product. They did a great job. I, again, I can't say that enough. The price is spot on. You're not paying too much for these pedals. For, when the, for the quality you get with this, when you get it, you will not be dissatisfied. I can tell you that right now. It's worth every cent. All right, folks, so we're going to wrap it up there. I hope you enjoyed this video. I want to thank you for coming and checking out my channel. Like I always say, I can't do it without you. So if you're new to the channel, hit that like button and subscribe. Don't forget to share. If you're not new, thanks for coming and don't forget to give it a like. We'll see you all around on the next one. Peace.